Thank god I read 21 books last month because I did not get to that many this month. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maddie and thanks for joining us if you're new here or welcome back if you've been around for a little while. Today I'm going to be wrapping up everything that I've read in August and yes, I'm a little sunburnt. Um, hopefully it doesn't look too awful. I almost made it through the whole summer without getting burnt, but I failed. Without further ado, let's dive in. So the very first book that I read this month is called A Cosmology of Monsters and it is by Sean Hamill and it follows this family that can see monsters or they have kind of these specific types of monsters finding them and how the family is like trying to navigate living with that and kind of losing different people to this like other world that exists on the other side of the city is how I can explain it because I don't agree with the synopsis on the back. This book was like a spur of the moment pick for me. When I went to chapters, I like did this massive reading haul and this was one of the books that I grabbed randomly. I will link that video up here if you want to check it out. But I have to say it's disappointing. Like I mentioned, the synopsis on the back is not accurate to what the book is about at all. It makes it seem like they can see like all types of monsters and then the main character befriends monsters. I don't think it's too spoilery, but the main character actually ends up in like a romantic and sexual relationship with one of the monsters. And I was like, I don't know what's happening. And I was getting too much information about what was going on with them. And then there's his sister's suicidal ideation that's just like thrown into the mix. And I think the whole thing is like meant to be this narrative about trauma and like the monsters representing like their family trauma from losing their dad at a young age and how like they had to move through that but it just took forever to come together and I was like so confused the entire time that I really struggled with like getting into it so I only gave it two stars or it was readable but I wouldn't really recommend it. <laughs> the next book that I read is Gender Queer, a memoir which is by Maya Kababe. I loved this book. It was absolutely incredible and I think one of the things is, so this book is about Maya Kababe's like life experience, it's a memoir as it says. He is asexual as well as gender queer and as someone who is asexual and is figuring out what the fuck my gender is, so much of this book related to me to like things that I thought or things like within society that I was supposed to be identifying with that like I didn't feel able to identify with. I had borrowed my friend's copy but I might look into getting a copy of my own just because there's parts that I want to go back to and I kind of want to like reconnect with. Just kind of this feeling of feeling like in this like nebulous space and not really identifying with something and then also on like the sexuality side feeling like you're supposed to feel something or you have to force yourself to feel something that society dictates that we need to feel that isn't something that E necessarily feels or asexual people necessarily feel. I don't think there's enough stories that one cover asexuality let alone like own voices stories about asexuality and same things with like gender queer. We're starting to get a lot more trans stories and slowly with that like more non-binary stories but gender queer and gender fluid stories I haven't seen as many of. If you have any recommendations leave them for me down below. I would love to read them. So I think this is a gorgeous memoir but also a really important memoir because it lets people know that they're not alone in their experiences and that like feeling of seeing yourself represented on the page is absolutely unparalleled. <laughs> The third book that I finished this month was the second half of Lore Olympus. I do this a lot with webcomics where like if I'm reading the most recent on webtoons they're usually called seasons or like the most recent book that's published online. I'll just mark it as read because honestly I'm usually reading it every week so I'm like I read the big chunk at once but I will be finishing it. It's just easier than trying to like leave it in my currently read until like the second season is done however many months from now but I am in love with this story. It was on hiatus for a couple weeks and then it started posting again and I was just reading the most recent update and the characters and everything, how like well cre crafted this world is that like you really feel involved in it and attached to people and you like hope for the best for them. There's so many characters like Hades and Persephone in particular that I absolutely love. Um, Eros is incredible, big fan of him. And it just does an amazing job of taking this mythology and staying true to it while twisting it at the same time because as someone who like is familiar with mythology, 
it's really cool to like be able to identify pieces of certain myths but like also I don't know where the story is necessarily going at the same time so that's really cool to be able to get a bit of a push and pull and the gorgeous artwork of course is also amazing if I build up enough of a repertoire of webcomics again and people want me to maybe do a couple more webcomic Wednesdays that's definitely something I can look into just drop me a comment if that's something that you'd like to see on this channel after that I read The Extraordinaries which is by TJ Klune I bought this one recently when I went out book shopping with my friends it actually still has the price tag on the back I'm a little scared to peel it off because it's from a bookstore in town and they don't have like as nice of the price tags as like the nice indigo ones that peel off very satisfyingly. There's nothing worse than having like sticky tack residue left on your book. But to actually talk about what the book is about. This is by TJ Klune who wrote The House in the Cerulean Sea which I have already read and it follows these two characters. So Nick is the main character. He has ADHD and there's some great neurodivergent rep in here and he has a crush on Shadowstar who's like Nova City's biggest hero. So in this world like extraordinaries exist which are essentially like superheroes or people who have superpowers and he's kind of trying to figure out what's going on and then there's also his best friend who is desperately in love with him. I am blanking on his name. I want to say it's Ben. Seth. <laughs> his best friend Seth who is desperately in love with him but he is too blind to see it as well as the villain of the city, Pyrostorm, that is kind of starting to wreak more and more havoc. And Nick and Seth are kind of trying to figure out like what's going on and Nick's trying to navigate his own role in what is happening and as well his own role like in his life as he continues to grieve the loss of his mother and try and kind of find his place moving forward and also dealing with his relationship with his dad and his ADHD and really struggling with feeling like he's has a hard time fitting in and having people understand him. This book starts with like an excerpt from Nick's fan fiction. It's like self-insert fan fiction with him and Shadowstar. And I just want to give the author props because I don't want to say it sounds like fan fiction because I think there's a very unfortunate stereotype out there about what fan fiction sounds like because I have read some fan fiction that is absolutely incredible. It should be published. Who the hell is picking Fifty Shades of Grey fanfiction to publish when there's so much better stuff out there? But like, if you think of like the stereotypical type of fanfiction that like a teenager would write about someone that they're absolutely like infatuated with, he does such a great job of it. Like dialogue tags that make no sense and information that jumps around and like over the top descriptors it's so perfect and then they include the comments and everything and I'm like god I feel like I'm on AO3 right now so props to TJ Klune for doing that as well as the characters are just absolutely lovely in this the only thing that I found like a little bit of a flaw is I was able to like piece together what was gonna happen fairly quickly so I was getting frustrated at points because I wanted the characters to catch up where I was that could just be because it's targeted more for a young adult audience and I'm a little bit older, but that could also be intentional because I do think part of that is because of Nick's ADHD, but it is also super cool to read books with neurodivergent rep. Love me some good neurodivergent rep. The second book in the series is already out, but because I am so particular, I want to wait until the paperback is out so that they'll match when I have them on my shelf. So maybe I'll see if I can get it from the library in the meantime. I have problems, it's fine. <laughs> After this I read The Maidens, which is by Alex Michaelides? I don't know if that's how you say his last name. And this is by the author of The Silent Patient, which I read last year and absolutely loved. It had one of the best plot twists I've read in a while, probably that with Alex North's books were some of the best plot twists I had read in forever and I had a lot of them last year. And this follows a series of murders that is happening at a university and the main character is trying to like kind of piece together what's happening. She doesn't go to the university, her niece, kind of like adopted daughter, goes to the university and it's one of her close friends who's one of the first girls that's killed and there is this professor who has this group of special students called the Maidens and seems kind of like sus and she's convinced that he is the one who is killing these girls and she is going to prove it. It is really good. I did only give it four and a half stars because I wasn't like over the moon with like the resolution of the story and like finding out who the murderer was and everything that happened there. There were certain plot twists where I was definitely like did not see that coming, but I don't know if it really 
fit within the context of the narrative. So I was a little bit disappointed that way, but still riveting a good thriller. I definitely couldn't wait to find out what happens. There's a reason this book is so popular as well as The Silent Patient. So if thrillers are up your alley, I would recommend checking this out. After that, I started another webcomic. I need to stop starting everything with after that because I film these videos and I'm like, I sound like one of those like wind up toys that you just pulled the string out, but Maybe the next book I read, the next book I read is a webcomic called Castle Swimmer and I've seen it recommended a couple different times and it's been on my list for a while but I finally actually got around to reading it. So it follows Kappa who is the beacon that's kind of like this magical mermaid who is supposed to help fulfill different people's prophecies so he's always pulled in the directions of where these prophecies are and Siren who is the prince of this kind of like shark mermaid group like all the different like mermaids are styled after different types of fish which is really cool and his prophecy is that he has to kill the beacon to break this curse but then he ends up kind of befriending him it's not really something he wants to do and they might end up falling in love a little bit it's very sweet and adorable i love kappa and siren both protect them at all costs but the art style is also really incredible as well as some of the, like the little hints to like different types of fish and everything is really cool. It also does a great job with just, I don't know what the term for it is, but it's like representation where it's just kind of like in the background. Like there's a character who's trans and it's just like mentioned that she's trans and like the story just kind of like accepts it and moves on. And I really like when authors kind of create worlds where it's not a big deal because I do think it's really important to still have these character, these stories that like deal with sexuality and gender identity and queerness and have kind of the struggle and figuring out identity as the center of the narrative and kind of running up against the obstacles that do exist. But it's also really nice to just have stories where queer characters just exist and that's just it. And this is a story that does like a really good job of it. It's very adventurous, definitely has some moments that like really tug at your heartstrings, but I, I loved it. It was so good. Can't wait to read more of it. The next book that I read was The Once and Future Witches. And as I'm going through this list, I'm realizing I've had a lot of like misses this month. I feel like I've had a lot of misses in general this year. So here's hoping that with like my magical readathon that I'm doing this month, I'll link my TBR up there and some of my books for school, I actually get some more that hit home because oof, we've had some rough books this year. And this was one of them. It's by Alex E. Harrow and I bought this book at the end of last year and it's the books from that haul. I've read most of them except for this one and I've been meaning to get around to it. So as it says on the back, there's no such thing as witches, but there will be. So it kind of takes place in this world where everyone has some sort of witching. So like a lot of women pass down like within their families, like little spells, like to help with like sewing or cleaning the house or, you know, just like everyday things. I don't know why I picked the most basic feminine tasks, sorry. And these three sisters who have been separated end up being brought back together to try and find the Lost Way of Avalon, which is kind of this power source of magic and they want to be able to bring that back in hopes to like help liberate women. I do want to note that this book does have a like trans character and trans inclusionary feminism which is great but it is thrown in very last minute at the end so I do wish that they touched on that a little bit more but I know it's very difficult with these stories that like try to create period pieces and then fantasy and then sometimes they get tangled up in like how to balance out like queer representation on top of holding to the ideals of the times. And there is like a lesbian character as well. And there's a little bit of that push and pull where I think sometimes the author struggles with not really knowing like what level of acceptance to have from the characters. And there's actually a really interesting, not to go too much off topic, but there's actually a really interesting piece on nostalgia that talks about this. When I was studying Stranger Things, I read a lot about it. And it talks about the way that in remembering nostalgia, we almost remember this like rose tinted view of the past. And in that show in particular, and in a lot of books too, the a lot of like the homophobic or racist or sexist behaviors that would have been prevalent at the time period exist in the villains, but not in the main characters, because we want them to represent like our ideals and our understanding of equity. So while it doesn't necessarily represent what would be commonplace at the time, it makes it like more comfortable and palatable and familiar to the audience that's watching it in the present. 
and I think that's something where there's like a very thin line to walk to keep it believable without also being like, okay, why is it only the good guys that are okay with this and then everyone else is blatantly homophobic? So I think that's something that's interesting when looking at period pieces or pieces that take place in like the past or different eras and considering kind of the implications of that as opposed to like starting a whole new fantasy world from scratch and just making it like queer inclusive. I think my biggest issue with this book was I really struggled to relate to this, these characters. I have a really hard time relating to female characters in general and I don't know if that's like a me gender thing or if that's something to do with like I just haven't found writing that relates to me necessarily. So a lot of this book I found that I wasn't really attached to the characters and then I wasn't really being pulled through it because of that. Also, one of the characters is pregnant, and the way that that pregnancy is written, I don't know, maybe I'm dumb, but I'm like, I don't think this is how some of these things work. I'm gonna trust that the author knows more than I do, but I was a little like, how pregnant is she right now? Like, what is going on? Why are we always commenting on this? I don't understand. And I think the other thing too that was also disappointing with it is this book is chonky, and it did not need to be this chonky. There was a point in the middle where I was like, where are we going from here? And it felt like it was just making conflict for the point of conflict, and then the actual resolution at the end was kind of dull. One last thing that I will say that I just remembered that also really pissed me off about this book is I have an issue with books where the characters who get the happily ever after are the characters that are in relationships because it perpetuates this like a mad normative world where everyone has to be in a relationship to be happy and the character who isn't in a relationship at the end doesn't get that happy ending or resolution that uh, the other characters do in fact they go through like an incredibly painful awful experience and don't really get to like celebrate the fruits of their labor and it's really frustrating to me that it's like oh okay the characters that have like families or partners that they're gonna spend time with are the ones who get to live and this person who is single and has no interest in relationships has to die. And that's on arrow-coded characters getting treated like shit. Before I go into that rant, I'm gonna cut myself off and get on to the next book, otherwise this video is gonna be eight hours long about me talking about all my issues with this book. I gave it 2.75 stars, but the more I talk about it, the more I'm like, less. It's worth less. <laughs> okay, the last book that I read this month was Castle Swimmer number two, much in the same way as Lore Olympus. This is like I've read the second season up to what is currently posted and I will keep following along with it as it goes on. So the first season kind of has to do with this prophecy about sirens supposed to be killing the beacon and them trying to like sort things out and then I don't think it's too much of a spoiler like after they're kind of like get away from that. The second season kind of has them separated and going on their own journeys of self-discovery, which is kind of cool because you get all these other like side characters added in that have these really incredible personalities and you get to spend some time getting to know both Kappa and Siren like as individuals, but because so much of the first season was built up around like them trying to like get together and you know be able to escape and not have to kill each other, I got to the point where I was like, I kind of want them to be back together, and I know they're getting back together soon, and the author is getting kind of bombarded with people being like, when are they getting back together? And I understand like for the narrative that they need to be separated, but I also can't wait to let sweet, sweet reunion. So fingers crossed that's coming up soon because I'll go a little crazy if I gotta wait a lot longer for it. I'm getting better at dealing with webcomic wait times, but sometimes, whew, I swear. <laughs> Anyways, that's everything that I read in Mar my brain went March and then July. It was August. I know how time works. Yeah, so we kind of had like three bummers this month, which was kind of frustrating, and only one book that I actually gave five stars to. So I don't know what's going on with me in 2021, but we're struggling. So if y'all got recommendations, feel free to leave them in the comment down below. Make sure you like and subscribe and ring that bell so that you get notifications when my next video comes out. If you want to follow along with what I'm reading, I use Storygraph, so I will link that down below. And I also have an art Instagram account that I will link down below as well. In the meantime, I hope y'all are having a great back to school. For those of you who are going back to school, if not, I hope you're all having just a chill September. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Till then, stay kind.